my contention is that this second nuclear age has arisen out of natural causes. It's the fear, greed, and nationalism that has defined international relations for at least the past 1,000 years is now, not surprisingly, continued after the end of the Cold War. The, in a world where greed and fear, nationalism are predominant forces, it should not be in any way, shape, or form surprising that countries, many of them, not all of them, would want to get the bomb. I would, to make this a little bit more specific, I would just offer you the case of India, a big, increasingly rich country, did not sign the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, but got nuclear weapons in 1998 or 1974, however you define it. And the interesting thing about India today is that it is virtually an accepted nuclear power. When was the last time anybody in this room heard a call for India to sign the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty as a non-nuclear weapons state? So in my view, what's happening is that we are now moving into a nuclear, multi it's a multipolar world. You hear that all the time. I think what people leave out of the equation is that it's also a nuclear multipolar world. Increasingly, to be seen as a major power, it helps if you have nuclear weapons. There's, of course, exceptions to this, Japan, Brazil. But India's joining the club, I think, is extremely significant. Uh, I'm not here to predict widespread proliferation or, uh, or, or minor proliferation. The way I'd put it is as follows that when it comes to who gets the bomb in the future, I can imagine a very wide range of possibilities, except one, disarmament. When I look at these major powers for a country like China or Russia, the United States, or India to give up nuclear weapons, would significantly demote them in the status of major powers. More, I think the one particular major power, the United States, has much more to lose from this trend than any other. And we have been de-emphasizing nuclear weapons, certainly since the end of the Cold War. I think any reading of Cold War history would say that this started a lot earlier than that. Because the United States has the most splendid, effective conventional forces in the world. And we have a national global interest, a self-interest, in advancing this cause of nuclear non-proliferation. But if you take my argument that it's a multipolar nuclear system, my point is really can be said quite simply. Other countries don't see it that way. China, Russia, Pakistan, North Korea, certainly Iran, do not want to see a world made safe for American strong arm conventional warfare tactics. It is in their interest to do something else. And many of them, all of those, are getting nuclear weapons. Okay, so we could look at the big major powers and how they are interacting, and they are, they are not putting nuclear weapons in the background. It, I would, in fact, I would, the way I would put it is that they, there's nine nuclear powers in the world today, nine countries we know of that have nuclear weapons. And un, if our, unless our intelligence is really bad, I don't think there's a tenth at least yet, but it is possible, but there's nine, and eight of them are modernizing their nuclear forces for the 21st century. The one that, uh, that is not doing that, of course, is the United States. I'm not arguing that we should do that. I'm pointing out the, the enormous significance of the US pushing these anti-nuclear policies, which I fully support. What I don't support is the conclusion, though, that they're working. <laughs>